want to say thank you to everyone that's bought training and I want to say thank you to everyone that's about to buy training and shout out to the nerd tribe. This is really interesting. I call it the epidemic of high pay for poor quality. The disappearance of a job well done. I was watching some van life videos and this girl was going on and talking about she had bought a brand new van designed for camping. And she was talking about the things that you need to do when you get in the new van. And she said she would never ever buy a ready built van. She would do a custom build. And she just was going ahead and looking at this new van and just pointing out all of the errors and flaws. And there were many. And this brings up why one of the reasons that so many people are dissatisfied with their new house, defects, things that need to be fixed, things that weren't, and these are brand new houses. So we have an epidemic of people who want to be highly paid for doing a crappy job. And this, this is something that I feel is getting worse because let's take the feel of carpentry there's a lot of, there's not a lot of people who want to be a carpenter except if it's a youtuber who has a carpentry shop and he's creating projects and he's putting up youtube videos people want to watch that but actually be a carpenter that's one of the skills carpentry plumbers electricians you know virtually all of the trades are in short supply because a lot of the senior carpenters, plumbers, electricians, they're about to retire. And this group of men, I want to say men, because it's historically men that do these jobs. There are some women, but historic are just simply not interested in doing that kind of work. And I was watching YouTube and this is something that I'm starting to see quite a bit. I will see a content creator in the how to make money space, whether it's e-commerce or whatever, and they'll build a YouTube channel and the YouTube channel will explode. And then they would be selling training. And what I'm consistently seeing, it's these people have no longevity, none. I mean, they'll be hot for a year tops and they're out it's over it's a wrap because what i understand is happening is people are not trying to do an impeccable job they're just not so when i come here on youtube and say i have been doing this i've been doing the same thing at a high level for 14 years i am thankful that i grew up in the era that i grew up in because i consistently see on social media these people that i consider these one or two year wonders they all have one or two good years i i can i mean it's almost to the point where i'll go Go to their YouTube channel, see that they've been up for YouTube about a year or two. Then I will go to their links and the website is gone or it's down. They're done. They're out. Or they're over here doing this one thing. And then a year later, they're doing this other thing. I've literally seen people who have switched from Forex to Airbnb. That's a radical departure from doing Forex to moving to Airbnb. Essentially what's happening is they're getting on these durable, uh, what's hot? They're just jumping on what's hot. And I, it kind of makes me reflect upon what's going on in America. Right now, I, I did a video about these guys who have YouTube channels and the totality of their content is driving fast cars, going out to eat, messing with each other, and nothing worthy. Let me go ahead and explain the environment that I grew up in. Years and years ago, there was something called the reading room or the book club or summer reading list. So you would get out of high school and it was an accomplishment if they would give you a list of books to read during the summer. And if you read them all and you went back to school, and it's like, yeah, I read all these books. It was, you got perks for doing stuff and creating in accomplishing things. How many of you guys remember, cause I don't know, I don't have small children, but how many of you remember 
collecting cereal box tops. And you would collect a certain number of cereal box tops and then you would send them in and you would get this nifty prize. I remember Captain Crunch had this thing going on and you would go ahead and buy the Captain Crunch and then you would send the box tops in and you would get this kite. And I finally got enough box tops to send in and I got this kite. The kite was huge. At the time, I was about five, seven, five, eight-ish and the kite was as tall as I was. And man, this kite, this kite would like go so high. I mean, it would go so high. And what happened was the last time I actually flew the kite, the kite went so high that the string broke and I never saw the kite again. It was a little disappointing. But many of the things that I would do as a child were rooted in accomplishment, doing something, moving toward a goal. And what I'm seeing today is this secure the bag mentality. If you like Kevin David, Kevin David, if you didn't know, is the guy who created Amazon FBA training that was a complete and other fraud. A lot of people lost money taking this training. And what you're seeing is the Kevin Davids of the world create training, create courses that actually do not work. They actually do not work. I can say with 100% certainly that I have put out free training on this YouTube channel that is better than Kevin David's paid training. You wanna know why? Because it actually works. It actually works. And one of the things that I consistently see in this new space is a lack of conscientiousness. Jordan Peterson talks about a high level of conscientiousness. And this is when I was in the boarding house and I would go out and I would work these crappy jobs. I guess the equivalent, no, because gig jobs I would feel are better, but I would take these really crappy jobs and I would go in and I would do these jobs to the best of my ability. I wouldn't just do enough to get by. I remember I had this job where I went to Ellsworth Industrial, which is the industrial section over off Buckhead. And I was working in this warehouse and what they sold were ornaments and decorations. And my job was, cause essentially they, they had a situation where the warehouse was completely in a state of disarray. So my job was to come in and to match up stuff and put them in certain places. And once, you know, I understood what they wanted me to do, I sat down and I drew up a plan and I organized it. And no one told me to do this. I took some tape and I marked off sections. And then when they came in and to check on me, I was like, well, this is where they are. And this is where everything is in this, in this, see this outline, everything in that section is this item. Everything in this section is that item, everything. And the lady, Miss Dupree was completely stumped. She was dumbfounded. She's like, who told you to do all this? I was just like, you know, you, you gave me the instructions. And, I, and she's like, she said, this is perfect. This is exactly what we need. And and then Miss Dupree called up the labor pool and told them they wanted to keep me on. I actually worked there about nine months, nine months, because see here in America, there was such a thing as doing a good job. There was aspect of you do the job and you would get paid. And there was the aspect of doing the job to the best of the ability. And this started when I was cutting grass and I grew up in Alabama where people would tell you about yourself if you were messing up. And I remember I was cutting Miss Jones grass and I cut her grass and Miss Jones came out to inspect my work. And then she told me everything that was wrong. And one of the things I learned from Miss Jones, cause I had to fix everything before I got paid because she wasn't going to pay me until I fixed everything. So I went back and I fixed everything. I got all the grass and this taught me, and this is a very, very simple thing. It is better to have a broader overlap because what I was doing was, you know, I was running the edge. I didn't have enough overlap. So that left pieces of grass, tall grass just sticking up that was uncut. So I learned to have tighter 
groupings and overlap so I wouldn't have that problem. And then uh, I had to go ahead and, and you know pull some stuff by hand because the grass was in the area where the lawnmower wouldn't go. And it got to the point where I would cut people's lawns and they would look like a golf course. They would be so pristine because you know one of the things I would do is I would sweep up the walkways. I would um, you know take carry the clippings because I used a lawnmower that had a bag and I would carry the clippings and sometimes I would carry the clippings um, to our yard because we had a house on one acre and we had another acre that was on and I would just dump it over there and it got to the point where I had a reputation for cutting a, a yard at a very high level and the lawns would look amazing and I was getting like 10 bucks per lawn I think I think 15 was a lot. 15 was a pretty large yard. And I remember I had cut this new lady's yard because where I was stationed, where I was living, it was funny. I lived in Adamsville and I live right on the border where the white people and then the black people would live. It, it was very, I like round the border, um, one of our neighbors, Mr. Kelly, and I actually cut his yard. And I learned something really interesting. Mr. Kelly was just like, you did an amazing job. And he handed me a $20 bill. He said, I'll see you next week. I was like, okay. And then I started cutting more white people yards and I learned very early that race <laughs> had a big issue it had a big impact because I would um, cut a black person's yard and they would scrutinize my work and they would be a hundred percent on it which actually made it easier for me to cut the yards of white people because I had this high level of scrutiny from the black folks that I took over to when I cut white folks yards. So they were always happy and pleased. And I remember one time before I developed this high level of conscientiousness that I actually was cleaning out a yard for a white lady and I didn't do a particularly good job. And she pointed out all my errors and flaws and stuff and they were paying me per hour and she, she started deducting. And I feel that that was some of the best environments because you're young, you're malleable, you're open to criticism, and you're open to correction. That is something that is dramatically missing in today's market. You have people who literally will throw together, like this is one of the things, uh, I'm not going to mention any names. But I am surprised at the number of people who have YouTube channels, social media presence that will go ahead and put up an online course using Thinkific or Teachable and will not invest the time or energy in creating a custom, custom domain. I am like, I am amazed at the number of people who do this who, you know, to do a custom domain can be somewhat of a burden because each site is different. There's different things you have to do. There's something different you have to do with Teachable. There's something different you have to do with um, Think of If. But I feel it's well worth the effort because it creates a congruent message. Because when you go to the website and you see that same domain, subconsciously, it sends a message of quality. It sends a, a message of conscientiousness. I'm in the process of having a website built because um, I'm going to share something with you guys. YouTube, and this started in 2017, YouTube recommends black content to black YouTube watchers and because the ghetto the hip-hop the tattoo culture is the predominant part of black culture it's not all of black culture but it's a large segment of black culture I get recommended all types of foolishness in my YouTube stream and I'm about to say something if you are a conscious inches black creator that is putting out great content you're being screwed why there's 41 million black folks folks. There's 62 million Hispanics and there's 230 million white people. So you're missing almost 300 million, 300 million people of an audience because of YouTube's, I'm going to say it, racist policies. I think it is racist to recommend black content to someone just simply because they're black. Because like literally, um, I will speak to a channel, Rich and Unemployed. He's a guy on YouTube who's been blowing up. Um, you know, much success to this dude. 
but the content and the topics are not something that I'm I'm interested in. But he literally got pushed to me in Anton Daniels. I do not rock with Anton Daniels. It consistently will pop up one of his videos or channels. And I don't want to watch that stuff. I don't want to watch it. But because I'm black and it's created by a black content creator and the foolishness is getting rougher, it's getting worse. So I have already created another YouTube channel. And like I said, I wish I could let my loyal, great people, the nerd tribe know but if I go ahead on this YouTube channel and say, hey, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm going through, and I would get all of the foolishness. If you're a YouTuber, understand that when you have an established YouTube channel and you recommend this new channel, even though the content may be radically different, YouTube will see that influx of new traffic as your audience and will go out and find more people. Uh, the new YouTube channel is two weeks old and based upon what I've seen, I have nothing but white subscribers, nothing but white subscribers. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, and I submit this to you because I'm going to make this an extremely, because it's quality content. I'm doing the best I can, it's quality content and I'm getting a white audience and I'm getting a blog that's gonna be created. And I guarantee you, within six months that new youtube channel is going to eclipse this youtube channel in terms of subscribers in terms of viewership in terms of income generated because i will have a different audience and this is what's funny i'm i'm doing i'm doing i'm putting out the same exact content i have not changed up nothing nothing and this is one of the things that i've learned and th this is one of the things that if you are a black content creator and I'm, i've seen that many black content creators fall into this trap. I'm black and I want to help out black folks so they create black content and you're missing 75% of the market. Maybe 80%, maybe you're missing 80% of the market because you've chosen to operate in this silo. So you're missing like a lot of money. I was watching this YouTube create, content creator who's in the credit card space and I checked his numbers. This guy has been on YouTube two years. He has only 55,000 subscribers, but he gets close to half a million views per month. And his AdSense is $11,000 per month. My AdSense on three channels isn't $11,000 per month. So where am I going with this? I'm going to revisit what I did in 2009, 10, 11, 12. I put out really good quality, I put out a really good product, and that began the trend of Glenn and Cameron. And, you know, I'm kind of excited. I'm really excited at what's going to come in this future. I'm, I'm just brimming with excitement because I feel that this is going to be a game changer for me because number one, my, my background, like once again, I got someone building a blog. I'm going to hire an editor because this is something I didn't do the first time. I'm going to hire an editor. I'm going to, there's all kinds of stuff I'm getting ready to do. And I am thrilled. I am thrilled. And y'all know, and like I've heard a few people, like I am not going to do a review of of my new Porsche on this channel. And I'm gonna tell you why. I can go to a white content creator and I'll see nothing but congratulations, congratulations. If I go ahead, I, you know, thanks to the nerd tribe, to the people about, I will get some of that, but I would get so much hate because I have a nice car. So I'm just, I haven't been particularly motivated to post any pictures or, and I'm not, just not. So um, what you're gonna see is, I'm not gonna stop making content over here, but what you're gonna see is the content is about to radically change, radically. So get ready, we're about to put our foot off in this.